Thank you for joining us today. Today I am joined by Mike Rao, our General Manager for Distributed Cloud Services, and uh, Chris Ford, our Head of Data Intelligence and uh, Bot Defense. Gentlemen, thank appreciate you. Thanks you for having us. Yeah. Excellent. Great, so I would love to talk a little bit more about some of the things that we're seeing with application security. Uh, I think specifically there's a couple of themes I'd like to touch on today around API security uh, and artificial intelligence. AI seems to be uh, the thing that's top of mind for, for many businesses today. Yeah. So why don't we start first and foremost, API security. It seems to be a trend on and on. More and more customers are, are starting to take a look at this. And uh, the landscape, I mean, I think last report I saw there were like 80 different companies in the space right now that provides yeah. API security. And not only one is it challenging for our customers, but the choice is just, it's, it's not making it easy for them. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's a, there's a couple things when we start looking at API security. First of all, the increasing understanding of the importance of API security and the uh, fact that uh, traditional mechanisms like using a web app firewall to protect APIs does provide some level of protection, but not all the protection that's necessary uh, uh, to protect the API. And the API really needs to be looked at as an asset because usually behind the a API is you know business logic or data. And if you can, you know, get inside the API uh, and and uh, and take it, take advantage of that presence you have inside of the API, you can do things like steal data, you can change business logic, you can really cause a lot of lot of lot of problems. Um, so what we're seeing is, yes, your point. There's lots of different vendors in the API security space, and there's a bunch of fragmented pieces that all of those vendors the, all those vendors are doing. So we're we're looking at it holistically through the entire life cycle of uh, being able to manage the security of an API. And we look at it from the standpoint of the API when it's in the runtime, when, when, it's, when it's out there and deployed and being used by an application. And now with the acquisition that we did of Web Security, we're now looking at uh, API protection from the standpoint of understanding the API, uh, the API and code. And I think what's exciting about that is, is that uh, we believe will be the first solution that will consolidate a bunch of these disparate uh, API security tools uh, and put them into one, uh, one platform uh, that supports the need of uh, DevOps and SecOps uh, to be able to build uh, secure APIs before they're ever deployed and then monitor and uh, and uh, monitor and protect those APIs when actually running it running in production. Um, so that's where we're headed, and we think will make a big difference in uh, how customers can protect their protect their APIs. So you mentioned WAFs have a certain approach to how they protect applications that are already in production. WAFs we know for the most part have been traditionally very much signature based, mm -hmm. and we look at the dynamic evolution of threats today. Uh, you've got API gateways that are also out there. I mean, do you see what are some of the shortcomings uh, in an API gateway type solution for protecting APIs? Yeah, so API gateways is actually uh, a place of integration for an API security solution. So the API gateway vendors um, or the API management vendors certainly could participate in a uh, in the API security space, and, and some of them have offerings that do things like, you know, protecting the API from denial of service attacks, being able to look at the payloads that are being returned, and you know, look at things like uh, PII data or other 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 data that they don't want to uh, want to have exposed. But we're not seeing the API gateway vendors actually look at uh, the entirety of the OWASP top ten of API of API security. And, and most of that is around looking at the API from the standpoint of understanding the business logic behind the API. Um, unlike a web app where we can kind of understand the business logic of the web app based upon you know, a long-lived connection that the client has with the, with the web app. In the case of APIs, it's much more ephemeral. It's based upon you know, a demand response between yep. the client, uh, client and the API. And if we're going to understand how the application works and what's anomalous in the behavior of the application, you know, we have to put together a lot of different elements and uh, start bringing into account things like machine learning models to, uh, to really, um, really uh, discover what is good and yeah. bad traffic to the, AP, the API. So I think the, the gateway vendors and, 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 and the gateways in general are a place where API security can be applied, but I think it, they're actually, uh, I think it's going to be cybersecurity companies, cybersecurity focused companies that are actually going to put the investment into really building very big and robust API security yeah. solutions. 
What do you think are some of the biggest challenges that uh, customers are having today in terms of adoption for API security? Is it because it's such a frag so many fragmented solutions that are out there that there's just no one choice for them? I think uh, you know I think it's fragmentation to your to your point. Nobody knows. Uh, it's difficult to kind of put the pieces together and, and then determine that you've created a security posture that's that's solid. I, I actually think the problem starts before that, though. I think the problem starts with not understanding what your APR, what APIs you actually have exposed. Yeah. The things that customers get most excited about with our distributed distributed cloud API security solution, first and foremost, is that we discover their APIs and we show them what APIs are actually. Uh, actually running, and we help them understand the schema of those uh, the schema of those APIs. Uh, that is the first thing they first understand. Oh, these are all the exposed public endpoints that I that I that I need to protect, uh, and that drives the conversation first and foremost. If you go to a customer and say, "Protect your APIs," they might say, "Well, what are my APIs?" Yeah. Well, we can actually answer that question both with what we do uh, uh, historically inside of distributed cloud with API security, but we actually now can. Uh, discover even unused APIs with the technology that we acquired in the in the yep. web security app, uh, acquisition. Got it. Now, when you think about the types of threats, uh, you know, going beyond just signature-based protection, uh, I know within distributed cloud, there's a number of vectors that we can do to analyze. You know, this is what we do in machine learning, where historically F5 has done a lot with machine learning. We look at the nature of threats today, and like specifically, and you know, maybe I'll I'll point this question to Chris. We think about the AI data fabric, what role do you see the AI data fabric playing uh, in not only one, how F5 becomes uh, better positioned to secure our customers, but even help our customers become more efficient, more agile uh, in terms of how they uh, mitigate threats? Sure, well thanks Derek. Uh, the, the data fabric is essentially where AI meets data. Um, and so it's, it's built of components that number one will store and allow us to attach AI and compute to that data. Uh, the thing that excites me most about what we're doing with AI is around detection and this idea of adaptive detection. So uh, we can very quickly train machine learning models uh, in the data fabric that uh, give us much higher efficacy of detection and we can pull our customers in ultimately to refine those models. This is reinforcement learning. And so we create this, this very powerful flywheel that starts turning where our customers have input to the things that they want to see, which informs the models and the signatures that we push down to run in their infrastructure. And then we get to look at the results and do it again. Uh, so the, the data fabric can be very powerful when it comes to helping our customers adapt to new threats. And for me, the, one of the biggest pieces of the data fabric that we were most focused on was you know, data science is hard. Leveraging AI consistently uh, and, and exposing it to all of our product teams is really hard. We wanted to make that really easy for our engineering teams so that we could achieve a point of high velocity. And so we've exposed all these capabilities in the data fabric through a set of APIs and an ecosystem of modules that they can consume even subject matter experts can work with this. It doesn't have to be a data scientist. So we're looking to really democratize AI inside of that five. Yeah. And I think large language models in general uh, have been a tremendous tool for the industry uh, in terms of processing you know, significant amounts of data. Uh, and especially for our customers, they've got tons of logs. No one's got time to sit and go through right. all of these right. logs to try to figure out what's going on. So you're really getting a jump start. Uh, in terms of how they would interact with their data. Yeah. yeah, I think the other the other thing is is that you know building a security policy is daunting, right? Yep. It's really really challenging, and I think with what we're doing with the data fabric and the insights it gives us, we do believe that there is a future with for uh, web app firewall bot protection. Um, API security, it does get to the ability to just turn it on, mm -hmm. right? And the data fabric will collect the insights associated with how the application is running, what 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 events are being blocked, what are not being blocked, and actually make adjustments automatically to the automatically to the policy. And I think that's, you know, the kind of ridiculous easy a security uh, yep. a, a security buyer wants is they want to know they can turn it on, they want to know that they can trust it, uh, and that it provides all the protections that are, the protections that are necessary. Excellent. Uh, the last question I've got for you, Chris, is what is the 
AI data fabric and what is it not? I've seen a couple of things floating around what it is, what it isn't, and I just would love to clear the air in your, yeah, sure. in your own words. Sure. The data fabric is not in and of itself one thing. It's a, it's a set of services that allow us to do more with the data that we collect from customers. The real value that we expose to our users is going to be through our applications like the distributed cloud console. Yeah. And so the, the, really the, the AI data fabric for us is all about how can we simply bring AI together with data and let our, our, our teams at F5 go fast when it yeah. comes to bringing these AI enabled capabilities to our customers. Excellent, great. Well, thank you, Mike and Chris, for joining me today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Follow us on LinkedIn, X, YouTube, and F5.com, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>